Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about Canon's new flagship 410 megapixel sensor. What? The Li8030 SA. Let's break down what makes this beast so impressive. Quote, world's highest resolution full frame sensor with 410 megapixels, 24K video resolution and up to eight frames per second capture, which doesn't actually sound that impressive that last bit. What is it? Who is it for? Massive resolution, 24,592 by 16,704 pixels. That's 410 million pixels, 200 times more detail than full HD and 12 times more detail than 8K. It's a targeted niche. It's not meant for consumer level DSLRs or mirrorless. It's designed for industrial, scientific, surveillance, medical and heritage preservation. The compact form factor of full frame allows for standard lenses to be used and it helps shrink bulky industrial imaging setups. So here's some performance specs. Eight frames per second at 410 megapixels. Yeah, that doesn't sound like much, but that, those are huge files. Thanks to a stacked backed illuminated CMOS sensor and layered signal processing chips, achieves 3,280 megapixels per second readout. 24 frames per second, 100 megapixel mono video. Not gonna be useful for most subjects, but it does have industrial uses. Real world uses, microscopy and scientific imaging, industrial inspection, perfect for analyzing circuit boards, aircraft parts, or pipelines. No stitching of images required. Very important one, cultural preservation. Ideal for digitizing art, manuscripts and artifacts in ultra high fidelity. Forensics and surveillance with clarity to read fine details from a distance. So why does this even matter if it's not for consumers? Canon's achievement is gonna set a new benchmark in full frame sensor design. It pushes pixel tech and stacked architecture forward. While not consumer orientated, key innovations like stack design and readout speeds will trickle down into future consumer cameras. A public debut at Shanghai's PNI confirms Canon's confidence and that the sensor is ready for production, at least for these niche markets. So what will be the potential for future applications? Could this lead to the Canon R5 Mark III one day? Canon R&D, research and development, is obviously experimenting with full frame stack sensors and lithography, meaning smaller pixel pitch and efficiency. So even if we don't get a 410 megapixel mirrorless soon, expect novel breakthroughs to influence mainstream cameras soon. So now that we've looked at the sensor details, I wanna read out some very clever and very funny comments I've read online. Y'all have the intention spans worse than Gen Z, somebody wrote. They're quoting the article that people didn't read. Designed for work in science and bespoke industrial applications rather than traditional photographs. Yeah, so this is the problem that still persists online. People read a headline and not the article. This is the fault of both sides as far as I'm concerned. Publishers who post either clickbait or limited info titles to get people to click. People have obviously learned this trick and know it will just be clickbait or that when they click the article, it will just be bombarded with pop-up ads. Therefore, people don't read the article anymore and they just go by the title and get it all wrong. This comment, also someone uses fake film filters on the final photo. Yeah, this particular observation winds me right up the wall. People having the best cameras, sharpness, resolution, color reproduction in history. And what do we do? We turn photos into blurry, noisy, faded looking 1970s style photos and ruin them. This is my favorite. Yay, so I can do bird photography with a 14 millimeter lens. And I laughed about that and then I thought, wait a minute, is, would that actually be correct? So I did some digging. Now there's a load of crazy maths in there. I'm not even gonna repeat it back to you. Not that I understand it, I just looked it up. And apparently if you put a 14 millimeter lens on and obviously crop into the center, it's not magnifying the lens, it's just cropping in what you need. You get the equivalent of about a 50 millimeter lens. So it's a, still a funny comment. Canon rules, Nikon draws. I wonder how many times he's used that one. Storage companies are certainly happy. So this got me wondering, how big are these files gonna be? So let's look at some of these numbers. Now I haven't included all of the calculations. I've compressed it, pardon the pun. Bit depth likely, 14 bit or 16 bit per channel. Canon typically uses 14 bit raw. Okay, final estimates, format type, approximate file size, 14 bit uncompressed, 680 megabytes. 16 bit uncompressed, 780 megabytes. 14 bit compressed, 340 to 480 megabytes. 16-bit compressed, 390 to 540 megabytes. So approaching half a gig to a gig full file size. That commenter was right. Storage companies will be rubbing their hands together. 
So the note is that no official raw format has been released for this sensor yet as of July 2025. So these are theoretical estimates based on standard raw encoding. If Canon uses a new type of compression or raw format, sizes are gonna vary, obviously. This is another funny one. Canon was like, how much noise do y'all want? Us, yes. <laughs> Very clever. So if people don't get this joke, it's referring to cramming so many pixels onto a standard size camera sensor. The smaller the pixels, the fewer photons it can collect. When the camera then amplifies the weak signal, it amplifies random variation, which causes noise. So the punchline is cramming 410 megapixels into an area normally reserved for just 30 megapixels on average is going to create noise levels like you wouldn't believe. So yeah, it's a niche joke. For instance, if you've wondered why the Canon R6 Mark II, for instance, has only 24.2 megapixels, it's effectively aimed at people wanting the lowest noise possible. It's the sweet spot of providing enough pixels and having the least amount of noise. So for instance, if you had, say, a, a 600 millimeter f4 on this camera, the R6 Mark II, you could take pictures well after sunset. So final thoughts, the Canon 410 megapixel sensor isn't for your next holiday snaps, but it's a huge leap forward for tech, from industrial, forensic, and archival missions through to science. It's the ultimate tool for pixel-heavy applications and innovations that can revolutionize consumer models in the future. Okay, I hope that was helpful, folks, and I've uh, given you the lowdown. Please like and subscribe and leave any comments as per usual. See you next time.